Student told to stop resisting 56 times before fatal shooting, police say. This is what the police say. This is a situation that happened not too long ago right here in the state of Texas. A young college student was out, uh, came in contact with an officer via a traffic stop. Witnesses say that the young man made a sarcastic remark to the officer, after which the officer opened fire. The officer is claiming that he told the man 56 times to, I guess, stop resisting arrest. And the last time I checked, uh, resisting arrest is not a capital offense. So I'm not exactly sure how this officer felt threatened with this arbitrary number. I told him 56, there wasn't going to be a 57th time, so I opened fire on him. I definitely want to hear what this officer has to say about the shooting and how he thinks this is justified, just like the situation that happened uh, not too long ago in Bastrop County, a young man was tased, fell to the floor, busted his head open, and, you know, nobody's really been held accountable for that. I want to know why these officers felt the need to use this type of force, especially deadly force, in this situation. And the police state just keeps on rolling. As if you needed another reason not to shop at Walmart, here's this. Man handcuffed at Walmart after attempting to price match. Yes, the place that prides himself on low prices will arrest you and kick you out of the store forever for trying to price match. They were saying that this gentleman went to Walmart and was aggressive when he was trying to price match. I guess he came in contact with the managerial staff. They called the police. The police arrived. And long story short, the man is now permanently banned from Walmart. But you're saying, why would you do a story about a guy getting banned from Walmart? That's not big of a deal. He's probably better off. And you're probably right. But the situation with Walmart, as you may recall, that happened earlier this year with an InfoWars employee who was shopping at Walmart. And you may say, hey, he shouldn't have been at Walmart anyway. I'm not disagreeing with you. He probably shouldn't have been there in the first place, but he was. He goes to Walmart, makes a legal purchase of a box fan, not a big screen TV or some other big ticket item. He's approached by an unmarked, ununiformed loss prevention officer who looked like he was wearing a mock-up Metallica t-shirt. You can see him right there. He approaches our employee, says, hey, man, I want to see your receipt. Our employee's like, who are you? He's probably some guy trying to rob me. So the, uh, our employee walks out of the store. The guy follows him out the store, says, hey, man, I'm going to call the cops on you. Our employee said, okay, fine, I'll stand here and talk to the cops because I don't want the cops chasing me down later. The employee stands there, talks to the police officer, talks to the, uh, the loss prevention officer, and the loss prevention officer bans our employee for life. And you're saying, once again, no big deal, right? The kicker about this is when he also got banned, at least our guy, I can't confirm this happened to this uh, recent gentleman at Walmart, but our employee was not only banned from Walmart, he was put on a watch list. This is what the guy, the loss prevention officer, told our guy. He said, you will not be able to come back into Walmart, no big deal, but you'll also not be able to work in security. If you need, ever need a security clearance to work at a job, you will not have it. Also, if you want to work for a Fortune 500 company, you will not be able to do that as well, all because you didn't want to show a receipt for a $20 box fan in the United States of America. So if you need another reason not to shop at Walmart, besides their ties to DHS with the telescreens, besides their employees constantly walking out in uh protesting the low wages there and so forth. You have another reason right now. So if you don't want to be put on a watch list, don't shop at Walmart. Lawmakers push for billions to pay for questionable missile defense system. The Senate and House Armed Services Committees have agreed to jack up spending on a highly questionable missile defense system by 358 million with an M to 9.5 billion with a B. In addition, the lawmakers want a Homeland Defense Radar and are proposing to shower Israel with more money. Later on in the article, it states, if the defense bill is passed, hundreds of millions of dollars will be doled out to the two largest welfare recipients on the planet, Boeing and Raytheon, to build Israel's missile defense system. Now, I'm all about protecting the homeland here domestically, but spending all this much money to potentially, I guess, help Israel is a bit much, especially when you consider that we're here in the U.S. are not at a big risk from countries like Iran and also countries like North Korea as far as long-range missile systems. As Kurt Nemo points out in the article, the experts are saying that these missile systems that are largely, we're concerned about Iran and North Korea, can't hit us because they don't have the proper range required to do that. So basically all this money is going to go to Israel if that's what this money is going to be spent on because these guys can't hit us. You know, of course, we may be able to be hit by other countries, other threats, but Iran and North Korea are not a big threat to us as far as intercontinental ballistic missiles. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.